please. <laughs> this is satire. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're looking at all the people who have succeeded at filling Angus Deaton's boots on Have I Got News For You. Lady in Red! Now, what are those? What the... <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 20, Jack D. Tonight we whiff waff goodbye to Boris Johnson and look back at his life and career as a father, husband, journalist, mayor of London, husband, foreign secretary, <laughs> father, prime minister, father, husband and father. For the supposed celebration episode following Boris Johnson's resignation, they got Jack Day on to lead the proceedings. Day is a frequent host and panellist, having helmed the show plenty of times over the years. He poked fun at Johnson's raving article about how Have I Got News For You was scripted ahead of time, which was news only to him and not to anybody else in the country. Well, after that embarrassment, Boris wrote a piece in The Telegraph uh, attacking the show and claiming that it was all scripted, <laughs> uh, which, of course, is categorically... Is... Sorry, I'll just read that again. <laughs> but the show itself came under scrutiny in this retrospective episode as old clips featuring Angus Deaton emerged, and Dee couldn't resist a quip about the show's former full-time horse during its formative years. It looks like I'm wearing a wig then. <laughs> <laughs> I look like Angus Deaton, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Number 19, Rod Gilbert. Royal wedding will cost in one day half what the UK spends yearly on help for the unemployed. In his first hosting episode, the royal wedding was the biggest story of the moment, with William and Kate about to tie the knot. But not everybody was pleased with the royals getting so much attention, and Rod read out some of the public's best opinions about the now Prince and Princess of Wales. May their long and happy marriage be the last one of the monarchy of the UK. <laughs> A few years on, and Gilbert was back. The same week the news about the Tory power stance broke. It's not just him, they're all at it. Nah, Theresa the May, David Cameron, yeah, George Osborne. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unaware that they were only supposed to do this stance if they weren't visible from the waist down, we had a whole week of senior Tories looking extremely silly in public. And then there were his comments about Theresa May's impending resignation from number 10. Philip May's emphasis has shifted to hoping his wife can escape from number 10 with dignity. Sorry, Phil, but however she finally goes, Colonel Gaddafi left with more dignity. Number 18, Miranda Hart. For a few years, Hart was inescapable on the BBC. She started off her hosting career strong by scaring the life out of Ian as she threatened to marry him. I'd be like, if we get married, Ian. <laughs> it would be, but luckily yeah. I'm already married. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, we can, we can change that. Years later, and she'd poke fun at her propensity for slapstick in her own sitcom something she's often been criticised for. While introducing the show, she comically fell over. Who rely heavily on slapstick and physical comedy to get their laughs. Well, there's no future in that. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, um... Perhaps you could say this lowered the tone, but it's always good when celebrities are able to laugh at themselves. That's necessary on Have I Got News For You, otherwise you might find yourself complaining about it being a fix in the papers the next day like Boris Johnson. <laughs> no one saw that coming. Marvellous. <laughs> Number 17, Steph McGovern. This isn't Channel 4 lunchtime now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there are people watching. <laughs> oh! right Best known for hosting her own show on Channel 4, this brings no shortage of jokes at McGovern's expense every time she hosts, thanks to the friendly rivalry between the broadcasters. And just to be clear, he hadn't died. <laughs> it was also the week of Philip Schofield's spectacular resignation this time, with McGovern poking fun at ITV's bizarre coverage of it. So, as a show, everyone on and off screen at ITV and this morning had a huge In an earlier episode, she asked Dean outright whether he knows what Argos is and whether he's ever been to one. The show then devolved into McGovern asking journalist John Pienaar which politicians he'd take on in a fight much to the confusion of Paul Merton. Who's the hardest politician? Well, it's Nicola Sturgeon. You wouldn't want to get into a room with Nicola Sturgeon. Yeah, OK, so then what about your colleagues in journalism? Number 16, Charlie Brooker. Following Donald Trump's 2016 victory, Brooker was there to help us through it all by summing up the mood of the entire world as they witnessed the election. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Charlie Brooker. In the news this week...
In later episodes, he was there to persuade Ian to explain how, exactly, the anointing of King Charles III was going to happen, for those of us who aren't up to date with our royal protocol. And they dip it in the pure oil, mm -hmm. and they anoint... What, they lube him up to get the crown out. <laughs> yeah. There were also some topical jokes about Gwyneth Paltrow, still on trial during her ski crash case at the time, though it was her notorious wellness brand that they were referencing, as they discussed what makes the holy oil for the coronation so special. Does it smell of Gwyneth Paltrow? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually excreted by Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> Number 15. Damien Lewis Star of stage and screen, Damien Lewis has been in the hot seat many times and has delivered some great jokes. This is the news that the Queen has embraced modern technology, quite a big deal for a woman who can't even embrace her own children. Back in 2014, he had a quip about the Queen's first time on Twitter that was clearly a step too far for the audience. But things got out of hand when somebody on the writing team threw in a baffling joke about the 1950 film Harvey in which Jimmy Stewart has an imaginary friend. It's not the first time a rabbit's been involved in an attack on a US president. Let's not forget Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> what? It's always great when the audience gets more involved, with Lewis quizzing them on whether they like the joke or not. No, Who likes Harvey the joke? <laughs> Who doesn't like the joke? <laughs> <laughs> Who in the audience would just make a random noise if you were asked to? <laughs> And then, at the end, they were all asked to caption a picture of him in full period costume. That's you. And I did not know that was coming. And that's right. very, very inappropriate. Do I get my ginger discount? <laughs> Number 14, Frankie Boyle. He's hosted twice and didn't disappoint either time. In 2017, the NHS had recently been hit with a ransomware attack by the WannaCry virus, sending the Tories into disarray. But Frankie was quick to use this as an excuse to go after Jeremy Hunt, still the health secretary, since it was clearly his responsibility to upgrade the ailing computer system. What must it be like being Jeremy Hunt at oh. the moment? Imagine he goes into hospital. He'll be the first person to have a, a sprained wrist treated anally. American politics were on the agenda too, with the Comey scandal ongoing at the time. Frankie's got a lot of opinions about Trump and his administration, and he made those clear as day during this broadcast. He might change what the word presidential means. Like, in a few years, yeah. you'll be going, oh, my uncle fell over and banged his head on a curb. He's been rendered completely presidential. <laughs> Number 13, Nick Clegg. He's off to support fellow demagogue and post-truth moron Donald Trump in the second presidential debate. There are rumours that Nigel It's will all right be... now saying it like it is, isn't it? <laughs> It wasn't Nick Clegg himself that was so funny, but rather the way he was relentlessly attacked by everybody on the panel. Having only just disappeared from political life after the coalition went kaput in 2015, Clegg came out of hiding to host Have I Got News For You and answer for many of the things the Lib Dems did while in power. Do you still speak to David Cameron? <laughs> no, I, no, anyway, moving on. Do <laughs> you still phone him up when you're drunk? <laughs> everybody had a crack at him with Kevin Bridges and Roisin Connerty on the panel, along with Ian and Paul. So it's all your fault? <laughs> yeah, all, all, most things are. Yeah. <laughs> Roisin said what we were all thinking about how Clegg broke the promises he made when the Lib Dems went into coalition with the Tories. Unsurprisingly, David Cameron's never hosted the show. But I think uh, uh, if you make promises and you get yes. elected based on them... <laughs> Number 12, David Tennant. He's very good, isn't he, Michael Sheen? Yeah, he's Don't good. Don't you think? He's all right. Oh, he's good. <laughs> a few years ago, it was decided that government ministers were going to have to put union flags in their offices to be displayed during remote interviews, just in case you forget what country you're in. <laughs> David Tennant was on hand to counter this by draping the entire Have I Got News For You studio in Scottish saltires to show national pride in a different way. But most memorable was when Tennant's partner in crime, Michael Sheen, was asked about a correct Welsh pronunciation, leading to myriad riffs about how Sheen is the true professional you'd want to host the show. He's versatile, that's the thing. Yes, <sighs> he's versatile. He's comedy and drama, which a lot of actors can't. No, they can't do it. <laughs> Sheen has hosted, incidentally, but nowhere near as much as Tennant. Number 11, Stephen Mangan. 
He was hosting during the enduring Fruitcake or Looney segment, when UKIP leader Nigel Farage was grilled about the unsavoury things some members of his party had been recorded as seeing. I'm just guessing. <laughs> yep. Fruitcake. I'm afraid that's the wrong answer, he's a loony. <laughs> <laughs> but he's hosted many other times too, and was on hand to point out all the times Donald Trump had met Prince Andrew after Trump denied knowing him at all in 2019. Despite photographic evidence to the contrary, Donald Trump declared this week, I don't know Prince Andrew. If you think that's bad, they're also the opening words of the Queen's Christmas speech. <laughs> it was also Mangan who suggested replacing Brian Cox with an ice sculpture when he had to briefly leave the set to go to the loo after Boris Johnson and Farage were replaced like this in an election debate on Channel 4. Nature is calling. Absolutely right. Uh, but where is it? Have Take we got time. an ice sculpture? <laughs> Number 10, David Mitchell. It was simply that the Russians were unable to provide more than a few documents from the bidding process because the computers they used during their bid had been leased, they were returned and subsequently <laughs> destroyed by their original. <laughs> Always a consummate professional, David Mitchell has hosted many times. As on his other shows, he'll often go off script and start ranting about the absurdity of the week's events. One of his more memorable moments was when he talked about the rampant bribes with Qatar's successful bid for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. I mean, it's not, sorry, it's not funny, but these people <laughs> are assholes. <laughs> if only FIFA had sent him to conduct its investigations so that he could have pointed out the absurdity of the ruling. In another episode, the topic of discussion was Google's book scanning algorithm not being able to read fonts properly and getting confused. And she flung her anus around his neck <laughs> and kissed his forehead. But Google was also very confused about its finances. If it reads <laughs> tax as free. <laughs> Number 9. Mel Gedroich. If some of the other stalwart hosts are a safe pair of hands, Mel Gedroich is anything but bringing chaos to every job she books. That sounds like another one of your 80 songs. Suppose <laughs> love There's a possibility of romance. <laughs> or a lawyer being yeah, legal. One great moment was her and Ross Noble improvising a song about Cristiano Ronaldo's alleged girlfriend. The panellists also took issue at one point with Mel's habit of calling them a gang, leading to them forming a real gang and excluding Ian from it. Ready? You called us a gang again. Every time you come on the show, you call us a gang. I'm yeah. We, we're not a gang. We are. No. In a later episode, she also produced a song nobody on the panel recognised about Japan, though the audience was familiar. This is the news that Rishi Sunak is big in Japan. <laughs> Do you remember Big in Japan? No. No. OK. And she was there to do her victory lap when Eurovision 2023 turned into a roaring success. Number eight. Alexander Armstrong. He doesn't have an on-pointless. I think... <laughs> I can't I'm like, why don't you get Richard Osman to answer it for you? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Give him a ring. The man who's hosted most frequently after the departure of Deaton, Armstrong is a Have I Got News For You staple. He's appeared 40 times, despite never serving as a panellist, and has been there during a lot of legendary segments. Uh, this is the news that a swan named Hooper has fallen in love with a helicopter. No, it hasn't. Yeah, no, it has. <laughs> Memorable moments include him repeatedly plugging Pointless and dismissing Richard Osman as his assistant rather than co-host. Dozens of different choppers fly in and out of the runway each week, but Hooper only has eyes for the EC-155. <laughs> he was also host during the notorious news item about a swan that was in love with a helicopter, there to defend the bizarre story against notable sceptic Paul Merton. Not to mention the woman who was in love with a carpet. This is Becky Cox from Manchester, who's married the love of her life, a rug called Matt. Oh, yo. <laughs> Number seven. Joe Brand. I've no idea where they got that picture of my husband from. <laughs> Bringing her trademark caustic humour with her, Joe Brand has hosted many times, as well as appearing as a frequent panellist. In one episode, she addressed the winner of Bake Off being allegedly leaked, with a very specific instruction for finalist Ruby Tandor to deliver her a cake. She complains, saying, if I see one more person use the pun doe-eyed, I will personally go to their house and force-feed them an entire Charlotte Royale. <laughs> Ruby, you're doe-eyed. It was also Brand who was stuck hosting during the only round of immigrant top trumps the show has ever done. She even got the pleasure of announcing the resignation of UKIP leader Paul Nuttall to the studio after his disastrous performance in the 2017 election and was there in 2015, when Ed Miliband resigned as Labour leader. Ed Miliband has resigned. Oh, my God! 
Number six, Richard Ayoade. What are your favourites? No one asked you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Finally. It's it's the Megan question. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> He's never been a panelist, preferring to stay aloof and hosting the show from a safe distance. Always dry but never dull, Ayoade was on hand to remind Ian that most of what he was saying about Boris Johnson's ongoing court case wasn't going to be broadcast. Ian, yes. we're not allowed to say anything that might prejudice the case. Well, that's absolutely fair enough, because I would like him to have a fair trial with a desirable result of him being in prison forever. He also helpfully explained that being a social media influencer is an essential job to Baroness Wasi, and it was unclear whether she got the joke. Wow. Was that one of the exceptions? Yes, because that's a central business. Oh, is that? One of the top-tier Ayoade moments was his parody of Meghan Markle's interview with Oprah, in which he broke down in tears when he was finally asked what his favourite biscuit was. It's been a lot of people <laughs> on the inside have not asked me that, actually. It's ginger nut. <laughs> Number five, Jeremy Clarkson. Some angry passengers thought the fair dodger deserved a greater punishment, presumably by being forced to take a replacement <laughs> <Yeah>. bus service. <laughs> Others were more lenient and thought he should be killed. Not too long after being dropped by the BBC for punching a Top Gear producer, Clarkson was remarkably rehired by the corporation to host Have I Got News For You. He'd hosted it many times before, but the episodes after his dismissal from Top Gear were the funniest, as he makes reference to how he was supposedly banned by the Beeb from talking about cars on the show. I am not allowed on the BBC mm. to use the C word. Corbyn? No, oh, car. <laughs> oh, you're not allowed to talk about cars car. at all. He found himself on the receiving end of a bevy of jokes from Richard Osman about how much Amazon paid for the Grand Tour, taking every single one in his stride, as you would if you'd gotten that windfall. You know when you said you weren't allowed to talk about cars? <laughs> yeah. You're what are they going to do, f sack me? Number four, Kathy Burke. The magazine of the <laughs> North of England Rat Society. <laughs> for northerners who don't find pigeons dirty enough. She's only hosted a few times, but they were all hilarious. Perhaps most noteworthy was her time reading through the unbelievable specialist publication Ratitude about hobbyist rat keepers. Police in Norfolk have warned of an epidemic of people dressed as clowns. Clowns are actually fairly easy to capture because they tend to have extremely unreliable getaway cars. <laughs> <laughs> she had a lot of things to say about rats and the ridiculous headlines they produced, and a lot less to say about Putin. Rumours about the Russian leader came up, and Burke expertly dodged talking about them, at risk of perishing under mysterious circumstances. New biography of Vladimir Putin speculates that he might be dated leak. <laughs> <laughs> the biography is not the first to make this claim. In another episode, she talked candidly about how the weather was affecting her menopause, and the studio audience loved it. It's unmenopausal. Are you? So it really doesn't help. No. You, just, you just want a cold wind up you. At the yeah. start of your Number three. William Shatner. This is the Olympic torch which is boldly going where no Olympic <laughs> torch has gone before. <laughs> Namely, yes, I agree with you. <laughs> he might be one of the most surprising people to have fronted an episode of Have I Got News For You, and definitely a big get for the BBC. In this episode, he memorably started singing clues to them about the week's news, all covers taken from his latest album. The first one up was Elton John's Rocket Man, which was a clue about how James Doohan's ashes were launched into space in 2012. Doohan co-starred as Scotty in Star Trek along with Shatner. And I think it's gonna be a long, long time. <laughs> After Rocket Man, it was time for Shatner's rendition of the Canadian National Anthem, though they struggled to come up with the story. Oh Canada, I stand on guard for the Oh Canada! We stand on guard. Number two, Bruce Forsyth. But don't worry, there'll be no gimmicks, no catchphrases. So welcome to Have I Got News For You, For You Have I Got... Yes! Television legend Bruce Forsyth only ever hosted one episode of Have I Got News For You, but it was an instant classic. Oh. The star card, Saddam Hussein, so you've won. So well you got you see? <laughs> Though he was one of the most venerated showmen in the country, even Brucey couldn't always keep a straight face when he was asked to present absurd games to the panel. Worse, Ian wasn't familiar with the game shows, meaning he had no idea how to play, though Paul loved every minute. 
Then they started parodying the Generation game with an outrageously long conveyor belt with recent news items, with the panellists challenged to remember as many items as they could. Some sewage. <laughs> Constables, the hayway. A cuddly toy. Number one, Brian Blessed. Margaret Thatcher did great hurt to the British people, although not as much as all those bombs, eh, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> this legendary episode aired around Margaret Thatcher's funeral back in 2013, and Blessed was the perfect host. He went after absolutely everybody, from Thatcher herself to the people commemorating or celebrating her death. He said, very few leaders get to change the landscape of not just their own country, but of the world. I mean, well, he certainly changed the landscape of Baghdad. Jerry Adams, Jeffrey Howe, Tony Blair, all of them were on the table for a ribbing from Blessed. And he said it was a long time ago. Well, it, well yes, that's the idea when someone dies, Jeffrey. A bit of reminiscing about old stuff. Come on, shape up! He'll go down in history for his hosting this time around, convincing former Mayor of London, Ken Livingstone, to stretch his leg for him when he got a cramp. Ken, pull the leg, pull the foot pull, pull, pull his leg. No, pull, it. <laughs> pull the leg. <laughs> it was complete chaos, with Blessed also singing operatically to give them clues about the stories of the week. Let us know in the comments who you want to see hosting Have I Got News For You in the future. I'm going to go for loony. It's the wrong answer. It's <laughs> actually a trick question. He's not a fruitcake nor a loony. He's a closet racist. <laughs>